Hello, everybody. Bama Rush here. I want to go down a little bit into the family history. I've been sitting around this weekend with this blizzard going on, and I kind of got into this family history of this uh, family tree. This is a website called FamilySearch.org, and it's pretty cool. I really enjoy it. And what you do is you kind of enter your information and then stuff starts popping up as you enter information in that's already been downloaded to this website. And I was able to get back to 9th century France. Now, it will turn into English, but this is actually of Germanic origin. So this is pretty cool. So we, we're starting off with Henry of Franconia. Henry of Franconia was a commander in chief under King Louis the Younger and Charles the Fat. Now, this is of Eastern Francia, which is around Normandy. And he had a son named Berenger, Count of Bayou. I uh, may not be able to see that, but that's actually abbreviated and stopped right there. And I could not find any information on spouses just yet and if i were to do it then all this information would disappear and i have to retrace it which is kind of hard to find and when we take it over here and then we get into rollo de normandy i believe that's how we pronounce it so this person behringer and whomever the spouse was, had a daughter named Papa de Bayou. Now, Papa was a popular Germanic name back in the 9th century. Uh, a lot of them went by Papa for some reason. Uh, kind of <laughs> it's weird, but that's it is what it is. But Rollo, he's kind of interesting. He was the first Viking king of Normandy. And which is in Norman, France. He was a Viking. He was Scandinavian. Did a little bit of history research on there. And I'm just kind of um, just kind of putting it into a little bit of a condensed version of what it is. If you want to look him up, go right ahead. Um, one of the first Viking kings of Normandy, Northern France. Um, back then, there wasn't really any set countries. Uh, in that area, uh, you had the Romans that came in and during the first century AD through, I believe, 500 AD, uh, somewhere around there. And But after they left, there was a lot of wars. Um, Vikings were pillaging and raiding a lot of places. They went everywhere around the North Seas and stuff like that. And then Rollo and Papa had a son named Guyame and named, married a wife named Sproda. I believe that's how you would pronounce that. And then they had a son named Richard. I'm thinking if it was of that Old English, maybe French, uh, might be Richard. I'm not sure. And married a uh, Gunner de Normandy. Uh, back then, of course, where you were held from was a lot of times your surname. Uh, they just said, uh, you know, Gunner de Normandy. Well, D or De is French or the Latin version of of. So they had a kid named Richard or Richard the second. Now this is when I think they start making themselves um, kind of royalty. And they're married in Normandy, France, but you see that La Bonne Duc de Normandy. You know, that means he was a duke and married a duchess named Judith or Hudith. Hudith, Hudith B. And they had a son named Robert I Le Magnifique. I guess that's when the Latin and the French origins start coming in. Le Magnifique. Use the Le Magnifique. 
He was a Duchess or Duke. Not Duchess, a Duke. And married Herleva. Herleva. Eleve. De Valese. Falois. No, that, I don't know if the Falaise. Yeah, I'm not too keen on French. Then you come down to William the Conqueror. Now, this is where it gets interesting. William the Conqueror is a direct descendant of Charlemagne, one of the first emperors of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, what he, William the Conqueror did after, I believe it was, oh, I'll put a description, I'll link in the description of the history of the British monarchy. I can't remember exactly who it was, but he laid claim to the front throne because he said he was the original blood heir. So what he did is he went up to England and fought in the Battle of Hastings and defeated, I can't remember the name of the king uh, and their army. He took like a bunch of people <laughs> and went up there and conquered it and became the king of England. And he married Matilda, um, the the Flandre, uh, I guess that's still considered French. So they had a son who became Henry the first King of England. And he married Matilda of Scotland, which became Queen of England. And then they had a daughter. Now, at this time, I think the War of the Roses might have been going on at this point in time. I'm not sure. Because Matilda, she was also known as the Empress of the Holy Roman Empire. And she married Geoffrey V. Plaginet. I would guess it's Geoffrey V. And at this point in time, he was king of England. Because at this point in time, only the male heir could be the king. Well, she, I believe she was married to uh, Henry V of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, after he must have died, because I, I don't think you could do divorce in the Roman Empire. So he must have died. Henry V must have died. And she married the King of England. Now, I'll put in the history of the King of Monarchs. Uh, King of Monarchs. The history of monarchy in England. And we'll get you some of the history of Plantagenet. But the Plantagenet is, was very common. There were several houses that were warring for the English Isles. Now, the English Isles were kind of broken up into states at this point in time. You had probably about four or five of them. And Brittany, which later became England, was the main whole of the British Isles in the main part of England. You had Wales, you had Northumbria, or Northum yeah, Northumbria. You had uh, Gilt, which became Scotland. Um, several, Ireland, which was called uh, Gale. A lot of different islands um, that were part of Brittany or a warring with Brittany at that point in time. So they married each other. And then you had kid here, if you guys can see this, King Henry the second. Now King Hen 
He the second was also a Plantagenet. And he married Eleanor of Aquitaine. And then they had a kid, which was Richard the Lionheart. Well, a lot of people know that Richard the Lionheart was the crusading king. He was the one that was warring with uh, most of the tribes and Islamic factions in Northern Africa and the Middle East. But he died. And then so John became king after Richard the Lionheart. And he married Isabel D. Angelome, um, Angelome, Angelome, Angeline. And then they had a kid, King Henry the Third, which married Eleanor de Provence. And there's a lot of French history in this English. In this English monarchy. A lot of French history. A lot of Germanic history. And then. They had a son. Edward the first. Which. Here's where the Spanish. Influence comes in. To the monarchy of kings. Monarch. Why do I keep saying that? Monarchy of kings. Yeah words are hard. And to the monarchy. And then, this is where the direct descendants to the heritage, my heritage, to the king ends. Uh, and the queens. So they had a daughter. Let's back this out a little bit. They had a daughter. And they did have another king. Uh, if you see down here, Edward II, that went on. But this is where my direct bloodline forks off right here. With Elizabeth of Rudlon. So, he was, Edward II was the brother of Elizabeth here. Let's get that back in there. So Elizabeth and Humphrey de Bouillon had a son named William. He married Elizabeth and they had a daughter named Elizabeth de Bouillon, a countess. She married Richard Fitzalan, the first, fourth Earl of Arundel. You may not be able to see that, but it pops up underneath a window of mine. They had a daughter named Elizabeth as well, Ellen Norfolk. So that's kind of interesting. You got Fitzalan and De Bowen and changed to. Alan Norfolk. So, what happened there? I'm not exactly sure. The name, the last name changed, the surname, and still back in this time, you started getting into the occupational last names and also where you came from. Like, my last name, Rush, which means of the marsh. So they had a daughter named Joan. And then married Tomless Stanley, Sir Tomless Stanley. And they had a daughter named Countess Margaret Stanley, 
who married Sir William Troutbeck. Troutbeck. So maybe started becoming married a fisherman. Maybe. Troutbeck. So Beck, I believe, is Germanic. Troutbeck. So that's probably a uh, combination of English and Germanic. And then they had a daughter named Janet Joan. And she married Sir William Botella. And they had a daughter named Lady Constance the Fair Butler Woolerton. So what's kind of confusing me is the name changes. Because, well, if you see here, there, she was, why is this lady? They must have known each other because uh, this is maybe a little incestual history here, which happened. We all know that. Sometimes the treaty didn't fork too much. Hopefully they were distant cousins. Uh, but if you see that, Constance de Vere right here was married to John Boteller the first. And so maybe he was in love with her and named her Lady Constance. Or Well, they died at the same time. You know, your dates can get a little mixed up from what I understand. There's a lot of these are circas. Which, see, because if you see right here, married about 1428. That could be a lot of lost history. Where they kind of make a guess by documents maybe letters that were written at this point in time like Anne Boleyn was said to be born at a later date but they found a letter that she wrote prior to that born date um so they figured her to be a little bit older than what originally was thought when they made the history started recording the history so this can happen um Maybe he died and I don't know. This is this is where it kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. But anyway, we'll move on. They had a daughter named Elizabeth Le Boteller. I think it's Boteller. And she married Thomas Lovett the third. And he must have had two sons named Thomas. Because you got Thomas V, love it. Married Anne D'Anvers. They had a daughter named Elizabeth, love it. Married Anthony Cave. And this is still in England. We're moving all around England. And Mary, they had a daughter named Mary. They named Mary that married Jerome Weston. And then they had a daughter that they named Mary again, who married William Clark. Here's another interesting thing. Now, if we see right here, we're in St. Andrew, Holborn, London, Middle Essex. I think that's Middle Essex. It's not bringing up a window for me, but London, England. Then we come to Richard. Now, we don't have a spouse for Richard. And I haven't done any research on that, so I might have to see what I can find out about this. So we come from England. I don't know if that was lost and he married someone that didn't have any records. But whomever he married, 
they had a daughter named Margaret. I like this, the coat of arms. So they must have been kind of wealthy. But if you notice right here, this is where the American heritage starts. Well, part of it. So they had a daughter or a son, excuse me, named William, who married Mary Graves, had a son named Captain William Howard II, who married Sarah Pinkethman. Now this is where they moved down to North Carolina. And then they had a son named Henry Groves Howard, and he married Hannah Allen, and then had a son named Mark Howard, who married Rachel Webb, still in North Carolina, and they had a son named Thomas Howard, moved to Kentucky, Davis County area. And that's where my parents were born in Davies County. Thomas married Nancy Slade Howard. And they had a son who became a doctor. Tryon Yancey Howard married Martha Cunningham. And then they had a daughter named Leela. Who married Earl Van Dorn Collings. And Earl Van Dorn and Leela were my great grandparents. Earl and Leela had my grandmother Mary, who married my grandfather Jack, who had my father, now his real name is Joseph Michael. Uh, they weren't married in Gatlinburg. They were married in Owensboro, Kentucky. I don't know why I put that. My parents are divorced and both have remarried. So that was my mom's approximate wedding date. I got to get with her to find out when she was actually married. But she was married in Gatlinburg. And then they had me and me and Melissa got married. And we had... Well, I had Aislinn prior to getting married to Melissa. We had Spartan. And then we're going to be adding another child. So, that is the history. So, we back that out a little bit here. We go all the way back. We have, well, I have descended from royalty. And that's on my father's maternal, mom's maternal side. And then it went to paternal. But that's by marriage. But on the maternal side, yeah, descended from royalty. Almost 1,200 years ago. That is really cool how far you can get back. Now, I'm going to try to add a little bit more to this. See how far back I can get some records. Um, I did get more records prior to Henry of Franconia. But I'll include in the description of this video the history of Britain and it's a condensed version. It's a, like a 20 minute. I, I'll go ahead and include a full documentary. It's about an hour long. If you guys want to watch it, I think it's fairly interesting. And then of course the history of the British monarchy, which gets into more detail on how these people became King. Now, what it does not do, um, you'll see his name in there. 
in that one little history of the monarchy, you'll see his name in there. Uh, you probably won't see Henry of Franconia in there. It pretty much starts with, uh, I believe, Edward, I think. I'll have to go back and watch it. I think it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding on to this right here and see what I, how far I can take it. I did find a father of his. I didn't see anything about a mother, nor of him and of him. So we'll, we'll see how far we can take this back. But I thought this was pretty interesting. If you guys enjoy this, please like and subscribe share it out uh we'll have more videos coming up we're like i said we're uh kind of just sitting in the snow here i want to watch watch a little bit more of this history of britain and stuff like that i think it's fairly interesting i'm getting a little sidetracked here i'm sorry but i want to thank you all for watching get out there I'll put the link in the description of this website to where you can maybe start your own family tree and do your own research. I got this off a chat group. A friend of mine, well, I'd like to call a friend. She's a fairly nice woman, likes to cook. And she did this. I thought it was really cool. So I, I started it. And there's plenty of rabbit holes you can go down. This is just one spot burr one fork in the tree and to see that now i did see that and bullion was on there and i do have more other people that i'm related to and it's pretty cool you can i mean just getting back that far in history to see where you come from i think it's really really interesting again thanks for watching We'll see you next time. Peace.